Welcome back on this Thursday. The Portland International Auto Show begins this morning. It's actually its 113th year. Wow, and of course, our Drew Carney is there at the Oregon Convention Center hanging out with all those snazzy cars. Drew. <laughs> I was surprised to hear that, by the way, the 113th year of the Portland International Auto Show, which if you do the math, that means the first one was like 1910. I found that to be very surprising. Here's a question for you, Brenda and Christine. I asked Rod just before the commercial break. Standing between two cars right now, one being electric, I ask you, is it this one, the cement colored Volkswagen? Also known or as gray, this yes. One, the black colored <laughs> Volkswagen. What do you guys think? Gray. We think the gray. Yeah, I mean, we, we both, both you agree. You know what, Brenda? Yeah. You know yeah. what, Brenda? Yes. Hold on a minute. Nick, what? can you come over here? <laughs> I thought it was gray too, Brenda, okay? I thought it was gray too. And I said, Nick, what color is this car? And what did you say, Nick? Cement. Cement is gray. So am I going to go with the Google? news anchor's tape? <laughs> or <laughs> Brenda Braxton is saying cement is gray, Nick. Well, yeah, some cements are gray, but you know, you could color your driveway of whatever color you want it. <laughs> All right, we move great. on from the driveway talk and we get into the automobiles. Thank you for playing, by the way, Christine and Brenda. Uh, Nick Miles joins me. That's right. His last name is Miles. And we're talking about the Portland International Auto Show. Uh, Nick, EVs are definitely a big part of this year's program, so to speak. Today through Sunday, by the way. Uh, this is... To answer the question, this is the electric vehicle in the Volkswagen fleet that we are standing around. It is the ID4. Can you point out a couple of things that make this EV interesting, unique, special? Yeah, so first of all, uh, it's a crossover. And most people think, you know, EVs come in small little cars. You know, they're going to be three row SUVs by the end of this year. So it's big and inside. And when you get into these vehicles, you'll experience something that most people don't, and that's excess room because they don't have those big engines and transmissions and all that sort of stuff underneath so the cabin is as big as a full-size SUV and that's the secret that people love about EVs. I don't even know if this car actually is open or not. Probably We're, not. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. It's no, not. They locked there it. goes that idea. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, you were telling me just before uh, we went into that last commercial break, there is a way to identify an EV vehicle on the road, a sure tell sign. Can you explain what that is again? It's 99% accurate, but they don't have grills because they don't need the cooling that a gas engine needs or what we call an ice engine, internal combustion engine needs for the air coming through the front. So you'll find that most electric vehicles have a sealed front and uh, it's changing uh, how they actually look. Plus, they also don't have a tailpipe because there's no emissions. Okay, just so. to point out again, this cement <laughs> colored Volkswagen has no tailpipe and it has no grill. Uh, as you answer these questions this morning, Nick, I, I'm, I'm starting to realize something about you. Perhaps you were not made in America. <laughs> no, I was, I was made abroad, but you know what? This has been my home for longer than I was abroad. Awesome. I just haven't lost that weird talky thing. Oh, it's not weird. <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful. Also, even though this is a Volkswagen, yes. it is made in America. Absolutely. It's made in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And that's one thing that Volkswagen committed to doing is if they were going to sell cars in America, they wanted to build as many as they could. And a lot of the EVs are not built in America that we see today. They're built in Canada, Mexico, or in Asian countries. But this is, and there is, I think, only a second one, the Nissan Leaf, that is made in America. So there is a lot of EVs coming, but not many are made here. Let me uh, tell our viewers again when they can check out this year's Portland International Auto Show. Today, tomorrow, and Saturday from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. Sunday, they wrap it up, day number four from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. Right here at the Oregon Convention Center. More information at PortlandAutoShow.com. Hopefully, Brenda, Christine, and Rod, you feel filled with information about this cement colored <laughs> Volkswagen <laughs> ID4. Absolutely, and tell Mr. Miles we love his accent. I was noticing that as well. <laughs> Drew will be checking back in a little bit. The 113th annual Portland International Auto Show starts today, and all morning long we've been showing you this year's newest and most innovative cars. Drew Carney is uh, live in one of them this morning at the Oregon Convention Center. You are going to drive a car <laughs> inside the building? I'm excited. Yes, well, I'm going to be the passenger of a truck that is driven inside the building, yes. <laughs> but uh, I think I understood what you meant there, Brenda. Uh, the Portland International Auto Show is what we're talking about. We are inside the cab of this all-electric Ford F-150. I believe we have two camera shots for you, this tight one, where I'm basically right in the lap <laughs> of my photographer, Eric Patterson. 
And then we have this wider, we have this wider view that Eric set up so you can see the outside of the truck. So two shots, one driver, actually uh, <laughs> one of our producers is here as well. Uh, Brittany Smith is joining us to help out this morning. We are all jammed in this cab. Brittany, stick your hand between the camera and my face. See, <laughs> we're all in here together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Greg Remensperger is the fourth person in the vehicle. Greg represents the Portland Auto Dealers Association and the Auto Show. So, Greg, uh, what do you want to say about this truck, why we picked this one to test drive this morning? So, this is one of the first full electric, full-size pickup trucks, the F-150 Lightning. And the standard F-150 is, is the number one selling vehicle, not just truck, but the number one selling vehicle in Oregon, new and used, year after year after year. So, there's a lot of excitement about this car truck coming out we're ready to uh, put it through the paces here all right we can slowly i'm going to stress it, slowly make our way around the bend here and we will set ourselves up for what's known as the straightaway now people will have the opportunity is this right people have the opportunity this weekend to do what we're about to do they would can be a passenger in it we have professional drivers like myself <laughs> <laughs> that are ready to uh, take you down the straightaway and show you how fast this truck can accelerate okay so uh, we've got the straightaway straight ahead before you go i want to point out at the end of the straightaway it is a <laughs> solid concrete wall that is correct and um, i can't help but start to think about possibilities here <laughs> now you look in great shape as you always do, Greg. You look as healthy as ever. But if you had some sort of um, medical situation here in the middle of this test drive, we'd be going right through that wall. Well, here's the good news. Ford has what is called one pedal drive. So when you take your foot off of the gas, or electric in this case, it automatically slows down like you're putting on the brake. So if something like that were to happen, and it's not, <laughs> we would come to a coast and you have accident avoidance. It would stop before we hit the wall. All right, let's do We're it not going to put it through those paces, though. Do you have a countdown, something you do before you hit the gas or you the tell electric me, pedal? You tell me when to roll and we will roll. We'll do it on three. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, my goodness gracious. Whoa! It's up! <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got a little headache there. That may have been too much for me to handle at this hour of the day, Greg. That wall was coming right at us. But we avoided the wall. Look at Eric. He can't even, he can't even stay balanced back there with his camera on the shoulder. But we're also demonstrating the turning radius on this full-size pickup truck. We've got some pretty tight hairpin turns here, and we are wheeling our way right back around to the wide camera out here. Look at you, Greg Remensberger. You're still doing TV, and I'm ready to call it quits for now. But we will be back in the 6 o'clock hour with more from the Portland International Auto show brenda christine and rodney back to you yeah that was pretty impressive we'll let you <laughs> recover here we go and get back to us a little bit later thank you drew welcome back the portland international auto show begins this morning director brian was telling us during the commercial break one of the very cool things about it is you can just go browse yeah like no there's no pressure to buy anything oh, you can just you can relax just look at the new stuff exactly and that's exactly what drew's been doing all morning long over there at the oregon convention center and drew when we saw you before you were giving us a quiz and you've been really quizzing us all morning Yes, uh, the quiz is electric or gas. So I'm going to show you two cars again. One of them is electric, one is gas powered. Uh, we have the Nissan Aria right here next to me. Behind me, we have the Nissan Z. Christine Pitawanis, is the Z or the Aria the electric vehicle in this segment? I think the Aria is the electric one because I feel like the Z has that big grill. I don't know if I see it on this gray colored one. You know what, Christine, you're so perceptive. And you were listening earlier this morning. Yes, we said a clue as to which vehicle might be gas powered is the vehicle with the grill. Because it needs the grill to cool down that engine. We don't need to be cooling down this electric vehicle. It is, again, the Aria. To talk more about this, I bring in Mr. Scott Paul. Uh, lots to talk about here. Not a lot of time to cover the ground. Got it. I think I called this a Rogue right before the commercial break because I am a Nissan Rogue owner myself. Which is, why not? And it's also Rogue sized on the outside. There are similarities to Rogue. So you've got the Rogue, which I drive. You've got the Aria, which is next to us. You've got the Z we'll talk about in a moment. What is special about this all electric Aria? This is our first crossover all wheel drive available and a bigger more luxurious car. So a lot of people have driven our Leaf for 12 plus years. It's a great second car, commuter. This is truly a primary car. This can be a vacation vehicle over 300 miles of range. You can easily get from here to Bend on your ski trip, not have to charge on the way there, burning no gas. A really fun, comfortable, luxurious car. Tons of tech, easy to own. 
I don't have time to get into this car because I want to get to the next car, but right. I have time to do this. Uh, where do you plug it in? Doop, doop. You plug it in right there. There you go. There is your uh, plug-in area, if you will. So this is the Aria, all electric, and now we move. Eric Patterson, you can lead the way to the Z, the gas-powered Z. And this is kind of a, uh, a new version of a classic Nissan vehicle. I'll let you explain a little bit about the history. Yeah, the Z in 1970, when it was launched as the 240Z, became the fastest selling sports car in the U.S. It was affordable, it was fun, it was quick. It gone 240, 260, 280, 300, Z 350, 370. Now we have just the Z, and it's a full redesign of that classic sports car feel. Rear drive, 400 horsepower, all gasoline, option of a six-speed manual transmission still or a nine-speed auto. So this is a true driver's enthusiast vehicle and it is brand new. The sports car is not dead. It's alive and new and brand new. Please get in. Thank you. I put my hand there thinking, oh my God, look at the seats. Those are cool. I don't know why that jumped out to me. I wasn't expecting blue seats. Blue on blue. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Didn't you say Paul Newman used to race these? He used to race the Z's. Yeah, he was one of our famous owners of these cars and it is a blast. I was sneaking Look around Eric Patterson there. Would you mind shutting that door for me, sir? As I tell you, Brenda, Christine, and Rod Hill, that we are out of time for now. But we will have more from the Portland International Auto Show coming to you from inside the Z. I send it back to all of the people in the studio. <laughs> True blue is your color. You work on the financing. I think you should get it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and all morning long, we've been checking in on the Portland International Auto Show. It is in its 113th year, and man, we've been seeing some really cool cars Absolutely. all morning. Drew Carney's riding around in it, um, in them. Uh, Brittany. Smith, yeah, our, producer. our producer, has gotten her 15 minutes of fame for sure this morning. True, it looks like fun. Yes. Uh, Brittany's been uh, handling some light duty. Now, Brittany, you want to shine that light even closer <laughs> to my face? Maybe get some light right up in there. Get that right up in there so I can't see anything this morning here. And now we see again. Uh, Portland International. We've actually had some fun with colors, I would say, Christina Brenda, this morning. Uh, you want to take a stab at the color of this hybrid Plug-in hybrid Jeep Wrangler. Any stabs at the color of this vehicle? Slate. Slate. It's a pretty color. Ah, it looks gray. Slate. All the cars that you're asking guess, about look slate. gray to me. I know. That's why I wanted to say gray. I they said They call slate. it cement. Well, you know what? <laughs> gray is technically correct. They're actually calling this color Earl Gray. Oh, Earl. Like, like the, the, wow. the Earl Gray. <laughs> the Earl Gray plug-in hybrid Jeep Wrangler. And this is Scott Brown. That's a very easy name to remember, Scott. Scott Brown represents many brands out here at the Auto Show. Uh, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram among them. Let's talk about this Jeep Wrangler. The plug-in hybrid is still unique to some, but no longer unique to the Wrangler. Correct, yeah. That, this powertrain has migrated over to the Grand Cherokee. But the nice thing about this is it's still a Wrangler. All of the capability, all of the open air freedom that our owners expect, but now guilt-free, you know, um, with, with a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid. So you get about 20 miles of all electric, and then the gas motor seamlessly kicks in. I once owned a hybrid vehicle. It was not a plug-in hybrid. I didn't right. feel like it was much of a hybrid at all. Like, right. I, people say, oh, what's I said, I don't know. I feel like it was running electric, or pardon me, gas-powered most often. Right. This, you really do have choices. Right. Can you yeah. explain that? Yeah, so as a plug-in, number one, it's going to prioritize um, the electric first, right? So that's the thing with, with the plug-in hybrid versus a regular hybrid is bigger batteries, electric first, runs in all electric. This has two electric motors. Combined, it's 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. And then on top of that, with a Wrangler, you have the ability to select a hybrid mode or a gas mode or an e-save mode, which is going to save the battery for a later date. Say you're driving to Seattle and you want to have all electric when you get to downtown Seattle. You can drive there in gas, get to Seattle, hit the, hit the electric mode, uh, and be an, an electric. You got all those numbers rattling around yeah, your head. I do. I'm not the car guy, you are, and that's why you're here. <laughs> but I'm gonna tap into your uh, knowledge for one more vehicle, the car next door, yeah. the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, this is also a plug-in hybrid? Same, same, basically the same powertrain. You get about 25 miles of all electric with this. It's more efficient. Um, you know, obviously this is a little bit, it's, it's less the bouldery, you know, you, you know, completely capable vehicle, but still it's a, it's a Jeep. So it's very capable, a little bit more all weather. In the Northwest, it's perfect. We sell a ton up here because of the all weather capability. Um, but again, a plug-in hybrid, same system, 25 miles of all electric, an e-save mode, a gas mode, a hybrid mode. Um, set it work, do what you want with it. 
Uh, what I'd like to do with it is get back inside the Wrangler and pop our heads out the top. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of fun to me. Brenda, Christine, Rodney, it is the Portland International Auto Show. It is happening today, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. The hours are 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. today through Saturday. 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. on Sunday. You can find more information at portlandautoshow.com. We stand before you, high and mighty, from Ooh. inside the plug-in hybrid Jeep Wrangler. Looking good. Wow. Well done. How fun.